Last year, COVID times, I made a violin from scratch. Now, I'm a professional violin maker, so you might think I make all of my violins from scratch. It's not exactly true. Actually, it's quite an international affair. Usually what happens is I get onto my computer and I order the very best Bosnian maple and Swiss pine from Germany. I get ebony parts and fittings from India. I get resins and dyes from all over the world. Then I make my violin. This time, I went very basic and very local. All of the materials in the violin came from within 25 miles of my house. The five different woods that I used, they all grew right here in Sonoma County. I made glue out of beef tendons. I made varnish out of walnut oil and pine sap. I made dyes and pigments out of grape skins, mushrooms, acorns. In the end, the only things that didn't come from around here were a little bit of metal and the modern strings. So why go to all this extra trouble? Well, I wanted to learn more about my craft and in particular about some of the things, the basic processes that used to be common knowledge 100 years ago. I also wanted to go local. I wanted to learn more about this area and collect a little more with the community. So I used the Redwood Violin Project as a way to paint a sort of snapshot portrait of the county and the portrait featured some of the things that helped to create and define a community. So things like our history, the environment, trade and commerce, and the arts. The medium for the portrait was a series of over 70 short videos that I made and shared online. The video showed the entire process of making the violin from collecting and refining all of the materials through all of the steps in building it. I also did interviews with the skilled local people who got involved in the project. So in all, there were about over two dozen different raw materials. All of them had to be refined or processed in some way. And when there was something that I didn't know how to do myself, I went out and found a local expert who could. So we had sort of uh, mini supply chains developing. So take, for instance, the little tuning pegs. Those started out as manzanita trees. The wood was harvested by a guitar maker who gave it to me, and I bought it to a wood turner, Kalia. She turned the pegs on her lathe, and she finished those pegs by polishing them with beeswax from a local beekeeper, and the beeswax had been diluted or dissolved in turpentine that I made myself by distilling pine sap. And there were lots of instances like this. So I used uh, products from several farms, from butchers, uh, a distillery up in Healdsburg. Uh, there was a papermaker and a calligrapher, and some local marketry specialists inlaid an image of a tiger salamander, a local endangered species, onto the back of the violin. So one of the things that really defines a community is its history. And because I wanted the violin to represent Sonoma County, I tried to include materials that had some sort of local significance. Um, this, envir uh, this environment, this area is sometimes known as the Redwood Empire because the original economy was founded on the Redwood logging industry. So the, the top of the violin is redwood, and similarly for the back, neck, and sides, those are apple wood from the old apple orchards around Sebastopol. And I used walnut oil in the varnish because for about 100 years, this region was a major walnut producer. That started in the 1890s with our own Luther Burbank, and he developed varieties of walnuts that would actually thrive in the climate. The walnut era around here is coming to an end with John Frey. Not quite so famous, but uh, the last remaining commercial walnut grower in the area. We interviewed him. He's in his 80s now and still working the same farm that his grandmother started out on Frey Road near Kenwood. Of course, the biggest story around here recently have been the wildfires, which are becoming a major part of what it means to live in Sonoma County these days. I very much wanted to have some token of the fires in the violin, so what I did was I made lye, which is a cleaning agent that I use for processing sheep's intestine. 
I may lie out of the ashes of oak trees that had burned in the glass fire that had just happened. So making the violin was a lot of fun. I did learn a lot, and I did meet some very interesting people. In the end, though, violin's a tool for making music, so it had to be played. I also use it as a way to highlight the diversity of music being made in the county, and I did that by making the violin available to anybody at all who was willing to make a short music video. And we got an amazing response to this. Violin debuted with a local youth orchestra, and um, one of its members, Gwendolyn, wrote a piece specifically for the violin and string orchestra. After that, we got everything from Vivaldi to Led Zeppelin. We had house concerts, we had stage concerts, we had living room jams and kids busking in the street. We heard Morris dancing, mariachi, zydeco, all kinds of great stuff. Very community, just people getting together with music the way we always have done. This is the Sebastopol Morris, and uh, you may not know this, but they provide a very great public service. Uh, every year, on May morning, they get up before dawn and they dance the sun up. So here they've just uh, successfully ensured that the sun's going to come up again for another year, and some <laughs> joyful music and dancing broke out afterwards. It was actually a uh, very poignant moment for the project because the violin is completely a product of the earth and the things that grow out of it and the sun that powers the whole show. It's easy to poke fun at our ancestors and their quaint customs, but um, they did seem to have had a visceral understanding of our reliance on the environment, and I think that's something that we're slowly starting to get back again. So here is the finished violin, proud product of Sonoma County. Um, you can see the redwood top, the applewood back and sides, and uh, tiger salamander on there. So what's going to happen to it? That's a little difficult to say, because a violin can have a working life of over 400 years. <laughs> if you think back to what was going on around here 400 years ago, or even just 200 years ago, it was a radically different place. So who can really say what's going to happen in the next 400? Short term, though, the violin's going to be donated to the youth orchestra to help continue our tradition of community music. Now we've got something very special for you. You're going to hear the violin, and we have a piece composed especially for this event tonight by a local composer, of course, um, Felix Herbs, born and raised here. He's now making his way in Boston. His caprice for the Redwood violin is going to be performed for you by another product of Sonoma County, 12-year-old Henry Miller. So thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoy this very local music.
<laughs> Wil je bijen?